give you an introduction on and algorithm for using Python. So I think the recording has already started. I'll just share the document and we will go over it. And I don't think uh, any one of you have seen the document, but you can find it in the uh, week two directory in the technical content folder. So we'll see SJS week two mastering data structure and algorithm with Python. So uh, if you have any question, uh, you can just uh, raise your hand or type in the chat. So the, the main objective of this uh, this challenge is for you, in order for the trainees to be equipped with skills and knowledge necessary in order to scale, especially in competitive and uh, competitive landscape plus in the technical job interviews. So most most of the technical job interviews include uh, coding challenges. Uh, it might be from Litcode, it might be from HackerRank, it might be from uh, another, maybe coding game, maybe. And so the main reason uh, we, we, we want you guys, or we want trainees to be equipped with uh, mastering data structures and algorithm is not, uh, as just because you will have an understanding of how to solve simple problems, so which will, which basically is a building block of a larger scope. So uh, the reason why it is chosen is just the number one is foundation for efficient problem solving. So if you, if anybody masters data structure and algorithm, it will give uh, he or she the ground of work for understanding the, the basic software development beyond just coding. So now you understand how uh, how to use a data structure and when to use a data structure and why you decided to use that data structure. So it goes beyond like sorting, searching, or any traverse algorithms. It goes beyond that. Now, if you are equipped with uh, efficient problem solving skills, which means to understand the data structures enough to decide and to defend why you are using the, that data structure. So in an interview, uh, most interviewers actually focus on uh, the how and especially the why. So like, for example, if you decided to go with a dictionary for a particular case, you need to defend the why and also you need to show how you are actually approaching that problem. And the next would be, because it's just crucial for technical interviews, and uh, I think a uh, few, of, few of you guys uh, already experienced that, which means uh, for, for, for lead core challenge, I think from JSI, it has been given for you in lead core challenge. Lead core challenge has been given, so it's really crucial for uh, technical interviews. So if you are proficient enough in this uh, data structure and algorithms, you will just uh, need that interview. And the next would be performance optimization. So now uh, there might be a time when you would be asked to optimize a certain code or to optimize the certain algorithm. So now if you don't have in a, deep, a deep understanding of the algorithms and data structures, especially in Python, uh, you will you, you can't actually optimize it. So in order to optimize the coding or, or in order to optimize some algorithm, you need to understand the data structure. And the next is it's just universally applicable. So which means from starting from web development up to machine learning, that's universally uh, acceptable or applicable in interviews and in any or in your day-to-day -day life. So for example, let's say uh, for uh, reading time or for traversing, if one data structure is uh, efficient from another. So for example, let's, let's pick uh, an array or let's just pick a dictionary. So for a dictionary, the reading time is uh, it's just one, or you can just access using a key, right? So you don't, you don't need to traverse through it. So, but for uh, 
an array or for uh, for uh, especially for linked list, you need to traverse through it and uh, read the data. So now you you understand the structure, the data structure, or the the building blocks or in the characteristics of that particular data structure. So now you can apply that into your algorithm and also for the optimization case, this applies too. So one of the main expected outcomes regarding skill and knowledge, knowledge is understanding the time and space complexity of a given algorithm. We'll just go through it in, the, in a slide or in a slide. In, in our session and now you'll get, you'll get to understand the different data types uh, of data, different types of data structure available in python and also you will be able you will be able to measure the efficiency of different data structures available and from the knowledge side you'll 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 build your knowledge based on um, built-in data structures in python and solid understanding of time and space complexity uh, and just we we'll just skip the leaderboard parts and let's submission so we'll have uh, and it's uh, I'll just go over the instructions so we have uh, now you have to apply first you have to have solid understanding of time and complexity and next you'll go through array strings and linked list and now you get to know which data structure to use from built-in data structures in Python, as I've mentioned before. And for the below tasks, you will, uh, I'll just maybe reshare re the whole browser. Okay, I think so. In this uh, Excel or in this Google Tips, uh, so you will uh, go through these code problems. The first task, I will just go over the the tasks and continue to the Excel part. And so now you. The, the sheet part is just used for tracking your progress and also for us to know where you stand and also where your strengths are. So for example, let's say you are spending maybe too much time on a certain problem and you are not spending, you are spending way less time on others. So maybe we get to understand where, uh, okay, uh, within academic team. Yeah, yeah, sorry, not academic. Zoom in a bit, it's a bit hard to read it from here. Oh, okay, sorry, I'll zoom in. Yeah, oh, no. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, now we'll get, as, a, as a, I was saying, we will get to understand where your strings are in terms of this data structure and algorithm part. So the first task would be to understand Bigo and analyze, to analyze runtime. So these are uh, references listed here. I will just uh, present uh, some of the concepts in a slide um, next. But the main task would be for ta the main objective of task one would be to understand what is Bigo notation and how to analyze runtimes. So it might be space complexity or it might be time complexity. And the next would be to understand the built-in and basic data structures in Python. So understand different data structures. So for example, what are the built-in data structures? Most of the resources are from free code companies for this. So uh, try to read through those and understand what are the built-in data structures. So what is the difference between list and top? Uh, what is the difference between dictionary and list? What is the difference between uh, how to construct a linked list in, in Python, how to construct another, like, let, let's say, if a, it might be a graph. So try to understand what are the built-in data structures in Python. So the built-in starts from list, tuples, and dictionaries, and it will go string. And the third task would be uh, to understand array and linked list 
from let's do for instance so how to create a one-dimensional array how to create a multi-dimensional array what are arrays and what is linked list well, what is the difference between single singly linked list and double linked list and we have given you a few questions for you guys in order to test your understanding and also to kick start this uh, data structure and algorithm challenge using Gleekcode. So these are the problems. So you just open the problems and try to uh, read the description carefully and also try uh, to solve a summit. So uh, I think you you can see the, pro uh, the problems here and you will submit your code on the code part. So you, get, you choose language so you can I'll just choose Python 3 and uh, solve the problem here. And uh, next part or so, now we, you understand what are the different tasks. So I'll just open the sheet and show you. So this is the sheet. So you duplicate, make sure to just make a copy of it and fill your name and your Discord account here and what is the total submission till today. and what are the total time dedicated so so first one this would this would be zero zero and for the next week this will be the total amount of time you spent here so uh let's just so let's say you have two sum here so i'll just copy this one and so the problem would be here so now two sum is here and the difficulty is basically easy since as you can see here that is easy and next would be tax so this is just lists i mean arrays and lists so how, how much minutes you spend in the runtime analysis of your solution and how you solve it and the type is basically dsa and the date that you are actually uh, solved the problem and I think the basic challenge intro is uh, clear. So if you have any question, you can just uh, so submit a screenshot of the 10x. Maybe I'll just submit, uh, I'll just say, change it here. Submit the link of your uh, over chips. On 10x as evidence of like for us to check your your submitted link of your Google Sheet on 10x platform. So you will just that that would be the submission. And so the next would be uh oh, maybe let's just open up for the discussion and I'll uh, go over a slide. So if you have any question or if there is something that is unclear, you can raise your hand or type it in the chat. Uh, Okay, yeah, the submission would be uh, today, but if there is any change, we will let you know on Slack. Okay, so I, I hope uh, everything is clear. I'll just uh, present the slide. Okay, what should we submit from for task one? Two. So uh, you don't submit uh, for task one and two, three, but you will submit uh, just okay. Uh, as you can see here, we ha you have uh, around seven questions. So these are the you submit on you submit your Google link to your Google Sheet. Make sure it's uh, publicly accessible, so you can check it. And 
you submit the solution of this on you'll you'll submit your track so you'll just submit this these questions the solution of these questions how much time did it take you and also since we have uh, since you have put uh, your lead code account here you can just go through it and uh, see your solution Uh, is that clear, Abra? Okay. Okay, so uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of the key concepts in Vigo not notation or in basically in algorithm analysis. So the next, uh, the, the first important thing is, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Uh, was it, okay. The presentation is visible, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so what is the uh, importance in the definition of this uh, eco notation? So it's just uh, to describe the performance of a certain algorithm. So basically, how you define a performance is based on input size. So, for example, let's say. Uh, certain algorithm might be uh, so efficient and so fast for uh, 10 elements and it might be like uh, the worst for 100 elements so that's the big old notation means and the purpose is to predict if uh, an algorithm actually will learn efficiently as the data increases so as i've said earlier let's say for 10 elements if an algorithm is so efficient and so fast but for 100 elements, it doesn't do the job well, or it's not that efficient. So, which means the algorithm is not that efficient. So, for example, if you actually imagine uh, sorting a list of numbers, it will just tell, Big will just tell us uh, how the time will increase as the list gets longer. So, let's say I have five lists, five lists of numbers, and sorting that would be, uh, would take, uh, no time in any kind of algorithms I use, but when the list actually grows into 500,000, the algorithm really matters now. So the efficiency of the algorithm really matters now. So the, the basic uh, building block here is how the algorithm efficiency changes as the input size grows. And the mathematical foundation uh, is, is just, you, we use simple terms, to describe the complexity. So for example, we just use, uh, for example, for selection sort, it's just a basic uh, sorting algorithm and the complexity is big O of n squared. Meaning if the input doubles, the work needed increases in fourfold or it will be quadrupled. So which means this algorithm is not that efficient. And so going to the selection sort and how to actually analyze it. So in selection sort, we know that the inner group actually runs frequently as the outer loop progresses. So for example, uh, let's say, uh, let's say we have 10 elements to sort. And the first time since we are actually going from I to, from uh, zero to N minus one, the second would actually be since it goes to i plus to n, it's it's a plus frequency. So it will the, the outer loop actually runs n times for since it's from zero up to n minus one, it runs n times and the inner loop runs n minus one times. So the first pass would have the inner loop would so if we break down here, the n, the first pass is n minus one operation. So which means it is actually going, this is n, n times going, and this one is n minus one going, which means from i plus one, since it's a zero and this is one, and we are going from one up to n, which means n minus one. So the second pass would be n minus two, This, which means the actual, uh, the actual comparisons are n minus one plus n minus two plus up to one, and the last would run up to one, only just one comparison, which means let's say i is 
nine in we have uh we have 10 elements which means the the la we are on the last element and the, the comparison needed is just checking that so for the last part we will just go only once and so the when we actually uh treat it as a sequence this is just a sum of the first n minus one natural numbers so for example 14 elements it's just the first sum of uh n minus one so for example let's say we have three elements and this will just be n minus one we it will be summed up to uh three so which actually simplified uh, when we actually substitute or work out this n n times n minus one over two, we will have n squared, n squared minus n over two, which means for a big or notation, we will just pick the larger part or the 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 part that has the highest factor of the the part that will grow uh, exponentially or the parts that outgrows the other expression. So, for example, in in the square actually outgrow, outgrows n, so we pick n for equal, so which actually simplified as n square. So that's how you uh, compute your your big O notation. So the other related notations are so we have big O, which is the maximum time an algorithm takes, and we have little O, the similar to big O, but, but more precise in terms of smaller contribution. We have omega, so we have there is the minimum time an algorithm takes, and theta would be the average time for type type calculus sizes. So uh, for example, if we if we take an example as um, for baking cookies, sorry. Uh, so it is uh, big O is just the maximum time, and omega is the minimum time, and theta is the average time. The average time it takes to baking cookies, and the maximum time it takes to bake cookies. And there is a concept called time and space complexity. So, time complexity means how long it takes to learn to run that algorithm. So, as I have to say, and the time takes to run that algorithm, and the space complexity is how much memory an algorithm uses. So, so for example, for time. It would, you can just check, you can understand in this example how long it takes to find a word in the book. So, to find a particular word, how long you, you have to search it. And the space is how many pages of notes you take while reading. So, how many actually pages are after is what space, uh, what space represents. And the, the hierarchy is, so the list is constant which is we say constant time it runs we we go of one so the, the logarithm this is a hierarchy so uh the logarithm is much less than linear much faster or much than the linear and polynomial is much slower and exponential and factorial are the the inefficient one or the slowest one in order in in time complexity aspect so the logarithm is as we can understand here it grows slowly since log n is much much lower than n and linear is just since it's n so let's say our uh, input size increases by 200 or by 200,000, the time complexity will also uh, grow directly with that and the polynomial would be grows fast, fast it's much faster than Linear, the growth is much faster, and the exponential is very fast, and factorial is well the, the highest or the fastest growing with respect to the with respect to the input. And for an ex an example here, searching for a name in phone in phone book is just logging. So let's say we have uh, one thousand uh, list of names in a phone book. So to search that, you just like, maybe if it's alphabetically sorted, you just might uh, use a binary search. But imagine calling every number to check it, to check for that name. 
that is just will take as much as time as uh, as the number of names that are in that fork. And one of the things you have to consider here are the the practical uh, implications. So the best uh, the best is ideal scenario, average is typical scenario, which means what is the average time it will run and worst worst would be worst case scenario. So if we actually take quick, quick sort and merge sort as an example, we can see quick, quick sort is basically an average, uh, usually fast in average, but can be slow if unlike your worst. So uh, you will see, you will understand why this is when you actually are implementing quick sort in your upcoming or in the next week uh, challenge when you are actually going through quick sort, you will understand why quick sort might be unlucky or we, why we consider quick sort uh, would be slow if the input is represented in, in a certain way. It might be sorted in a decreasing order or it might be sorted in a certain way. Uh, but for merge sort, it's just consistently fast but uses more memory. So now the space complexity is a little bit uh, a little bit more than the trick sort, but consistently fast. So in order, I mean, in any uh, way the input is sorted, merge sort will do the job. So yeah, I think this is it. If you have any question, you can just ask. Uh, for uh, Abdurrahman question, uh, minimal expectation would be actually try at least uh, more than half of the questions and also try to go through all the references. Since you are doing it, this, or you are preparing yourself for a technical interview and no one from uh, the Fontaine Academy team or no one, uh, none of your friends will visit. So you have to actually prepare yourself for that. And also your uh, slow time, you'll get to enjoy it and you will be much more accustomed, accustomed to it. Okay, uh, anybody have any question? Okay, should we also work on time and space complexity? Yeah, yeah. you have to, and uh, you have to, uh, on the Excel sheet, there is uh, a column for the uh, complexity of your algorithm. So you have to analyze your solution and put your findings there. So maybe, maybe, maybe your uh, algorithm's runtime complexity is big of n square. So it, you put big of n squared there. If it's log in, you, you put log in there. Okay, uh, if you have any question, make sure to put it on Slack as usual, and yeah, we'll be there to help, and then everybody will be there to help. And I think there is no other question, so I think we are done with, okay, for the nested loop example, what if we have a break inside the loop? So you will treat it, uh, first you have to understand how the break would occur. So for example, let's say that's, uh, for example, you can create the best version of uh, selection soft by actually putting a break there. But mostly, like you can't uh, create, you can create a better version, but you can't come up with the best uh, version, the best version of your robots. As I've said, like uh, the underlying solution might have seen. So, for example, the reason why merge sort is efficient and 
uh, each end is basically they have a different approach for the same problem. So if you are actually just putting a break, it's just like getting a better collection of your algorithm, but, but you will not get the best. And also, you have to understand uh, the break might not apply for every case. For, it might apply for few few cases, but it might not apply for every case. You might have the you can't get uh, the you can't get the average part right, but you can't actually improve the worst part. Okay, uh, you understand. So my question was like, uh, if we have, uh, if we applied a break for certain cases, how exactly we are calculating the time complexity? Mm, as I mentioned earlier, you uh, so we go is so you will have uh, the base time, the average, and also the Worst, right? As uh, as I've mentioned earlier. So, for your uh, for your ideal scenario, let's say you put a break for some case. Even if that, you just try to calculate your let your runtime. So, for example, let's say for a selection sort, for any any sort, or uh, Mm. Let's say you are you are using search and breaking when you find the value and let's say for example uh, breaking when you find an index and storing that value of an index on a variable and actually going through it all over the values you have uh, when you break you 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 can't be sure for. For the best case scenario, you can actually get something. You can actually get some value, or you can say, let's say, uh, let's say your uh, element is stored in the first index. You will just it will be a constant time, right? If you uh, if you have a break, but for the worst case scenario, let's say your uh, the element is stored on the, at the last index. Now you have you will go here. The the worst case would be much more like the same as n it will jump from uh, constant time to n because of the actually the unlucky part of quicksort comes in or unlucky part of your uh, implementation comes in whether you break or not uh, depends on actually the value so try to base case would be uh, if you have a break you can say base case would be big of this let's say big of the, always it will be big O of n, but for the base case, it might be big O of one if the array element is stored in the first uh, the first uh, index, and it will be n over two for if the uh, if the element is uh, stored in the middle or somehow close to the middle. So is that clear? Yes. Yeah. For any question, okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, as I've said, you can uh, mention your question. If you have any question, you can mention it on Slack, and we will be there to address them. So, the academy team, you can stop the recording here.